Hello, ladies and gentlemen. A huge welcome back to everyone for the special weekend edition of Markets Around the World. My name is K2, and as usual, we'll be covering everything from the latest data and macro news stories to the key levels you need to be watching. If you love markets like we do, remember to subscribe and help better educate yourself about how these markets actually work together. So let's talk about what happened in the market and the outlook as well. Let's expand the conversation by starting with the news. With an estimated 62% of U.S. adults owning a stake in corporate America, it's increasingly difficult to see how consumer demand can taper off enough to bring down inflation. U.S. stocks hit another round of all-time highs over the past week, further enhancing a sense of financial well-being for millions of Americans which might be complicating the Federal Reserve's inflation battle. 62% of U.S. adults have money invested in the stock market, either individually or jointly with a spouse through direct shares, a mutual fund, a 401k, or an individual retirement account, according to data released this month by Gallup. This is little changed from 2023 and reflects a return to levels that largely prevailed from 1998 to 2008. The lock-in effect in the U.S. housing market is real, but insufficient building over the past 15 years has driven shelter inflation. Higher interest rates contribute to the lock-in effect, but aren't inflationary. Low, 30-year fixed-rate pandemic-era mortgages have discouraged homeowners from selling, trading up, or refinancing, especially with the Federal Reserve keeping rates high longer than expected in 2024. This has sparked frustration and fringe arguments claiming the Fed's rates have raised housing prices, a notion disputed by Ned Davis research analysts Alejandra Grindal and London Stockton. A lack of housing supply has been an issue for several years, irrespective of interest rates, the analysts noted, clarifying that tight monetary policy isn't inherently inflationary. Last week, mortgage rates dipped below 7% for the first time in a month. High rates have worsened the affordability crisis for first-time buyers. Investors appear more sensitive to rate cut timing as earnings season winds down. NVIDIA Corp was expected to boost the stock market this past week, but ended up reaching a record finish on its own after blowout earnings, while stock market indexes stalled. Investors struggled with the Federal Reserve's meeting minutes released Wednesday, reminding them that policymakers aren't ready to cut interest rates soon and may even hike them again if needed. With the U.S. market closed Monday for Memorial Day, investors may worry about rate cuts and high valuations causing summertime blues. On Wednesday, stocks stalled, and while NVIDIA shares soared to a first-ever close above $1,000 on Thursday, the S&P 500 and NASDAQ logged small losses, and the Dow Jones Industrial Average fell over 600 points, marking its worst day in over a year. Will it be enough to put Federal Reserve interest rate cuts back on the table? Expectations about the Fed's rate policy have fluctuated this year. The next shift could come Friday with the release of the Fed's preferred inflation measure. The Fed is expected to maintain its current stance based on hawkish comments from the May policy meeting minutes. These minutes revealed concerns over high inflation reports from January to March, with some policymakers considering rate hikes. Officials noted that financial conditions might not be restrictive enough to curb inflation. If rate cuts happen in 2024, they are likely to be considered late in the year, possibly December. Krishna Guha of Evercore ISI said Fed hawks and doves will closely watch data over the next three to four months. The dovish view suggests inflation is moderating, potentially leading to cuts, while the hawkish view argues the economy remains too strong, suggesting a longer pause. Let's expend the conversation and review some data that I want to show you guys we begin with. The recent stats about credit card debt. In 2023, 61% of Americans aged 18 to 64 paid for their groceries with a credit card. 19% of adults in the U.S. used savings not intended for routine living expenses, and 3.5% exploited the buy now, pay later option. 20% of adults who used credit cards did not pay the full balance but met the required payment. However, 25% of those with very low food security did not even pay the minimum required payment on their credit cards. Record levels of credit card debt can barely cover living expenses for many Americans. 
How bad is the U.S. debt crisis going to get? Unfunded obligations that U.S. taxpayers face over the next 75 years are estimated to reach $78.3 trillion. Over this period, the U.S. will spend $215.7 trillion on Social Security and Medicare, according to the Treasury Fiscal Year 2023 Financial Report. Over the same time period, tax collections are projected to be just $137.4 trillion. The U.S. Treasury also estimates that the funding gap beyond the 75-year forecast will reach $175.3 trillion. To put this into perspective, this is almost as much as all spending since the Constitution was drafted in 1787, even adjusted for inflation. What's the long-term plan here? The next data I want to show you guys is, the CBO just outlined how unsustainable the U.S.'s fiscal path really is. The U.S. debt-to-GDP ratio is set to exceed 250% by 2054, according to one of the CBO scenarios. This will happen if, over the next 30 years, discretionary government spending and revenues equal their 30-year historical averages. On the other hand, if the average interest rate on national debt grows by just 0.05% each year, then the U.S. debt-to-GDP ratio would hit 217% by 2054. Lastly, if productivity grows just 0.5 percentage points slower than the base forecast, the ratio would hit 211%. All of these projections assume no recession during this period. This is concerning. This is concerning. 78% of U.S. consumers view fast food as a luxury due to high prices, according to a Lending Tree survey. 75% of Americans eat fast food at least once a week, but 62% claim rising prices constrain them to eat it less often. 50% of respondents consider fast food a luxury because they struggle financially. This is most evident among households that make less than $30,000 a year. Meanwhile, a family fast food meal currently costs $60, $70. What happened to fast food prices? This is the last data for this week. Let's expand conversation and see what happened to the casino. We start with the S&P 500 heat map. We start with Microsoft was up 2.37%, and Apple was flat for the week, and Amazon was down 2%. My favorite stock Nvidia was up 15%, and Tesla and Meta were up over 1%. Let's check out the Fear and Greed Index. It's currently at a 53 level, which is neutral. I think this week we could see the greed level rise again. Here are the earnings for this week. Feel free to pause the video and take a screenshot if you need it. Let's do some chart. We start with analyze the SPY 4-hour chart. If the price surpasses 532, it indicates that the bulls are still in charge, suggesting more upside potential. However, if the price closes below 524, my next downside targets would be 517 and 512. Moving on to the QQQ 4-hour chart. It appears that the bulls are still in charge, but a pullback is needed for healthy price action. However, if we don't see a pullback, it suggests that the price wants to move higher. If the price closes above 460, my next upside targets will be 471. On the downside, if the price closes below 449, it indicates that bears are still active. Now let's take a look at my favorite stock, NVDA, on the 4-hour chart. It still looks bullish to me as long as we don't break below 754. I'm not sure why everyone is trying to short this stock. If you're considering shorting, it might be better to wait for the stock split. After the split, we could see some changes, similar to what happened with Tesla after its split, where it didn't reach new highs immediately. Let's analyze the Tesla 4-hour chart. It appears bearish to me with the formation of a bear flag. However, if the price manages to stay above 176, I will remain bullish and refrain from shorting it. In that case, my upside targets would be 193 and 200. On the other hand, if the price closes below 170, it would be a signal to short Tesla with confidence. Now let's look at the 4-hour chart of gold. The price still seems to be under the control of the bears. However, this week, we might witness a pullback to the upside before another sell-off occurs. As I'm reading these news, here are the upcoming events. Memorial Day, Monday, stocks closed. CB Consumer Confidence, Tuesday. Fed Beige Book, Wednesday. Salesforce, CRM. Earnings, Wednesday. US Q1 GDP, Thursday. Initial jobless claims, Thursday. Pending home sales, Thursday. Costco earnings, Thursday. 
Dell Earnings Thursday. Core PCE Inflation Data Friday. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's all for this weekend's video. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask and put them in the comments below. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. If you found value in the video, please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys later. Bye for now.